the spirituality within the Gulen movement and the practices of spirituality, which is integral to the Christian faith also. I appreciated the distinction that there is knowledge and spirituality and those two things necessarily must come together. That the more we have knowledge, the more we are able to work and towards being more spiritual beings. I especially appreciated in this last presentation the talk about sacred space within the Gulen movement and how the sacred space begins with the individual and moves out in successive rings to essentially encompass all of humanity and all of the universe that God has given us. Again, this I could almost take this whole cloth into Christianity, but it's good for me to know that Muslims feel much the same way I do. And I really appreciated the emphasis on the role of the individual. As a Christian, I, in America, I see images of Islam around the world, and it seems to be mass behavior, almost cultism. But learning that prayer is integral, and it is individual prayer that is the center of that sacred space, I find tremendously enlightening and which is something that I'm going to go back and tweak a little bit but talk to my congregation about if you want to create sacred space you don't need to come to church on Sunday morning though that's integral to our faith you need to stop and pray and the act of prayer will create sacred space. Mr. Gulen is talking about is freedom from the obstacles that that prevent us from accepting God's grace. God wants to turn us all into people who, who, would, who would be lovingly and enthusiastically serving God and wanting to do God's will. But we all set up obstacles to this. Uh, okay, but don't touch this aspect of my life. Oh, don't do that. And so what this the idea of worship can do is to free us from, from these obstacles that, that, that prevent us from accepting grace of God that's being offered to his castle. This is just as real for Christians as it is for Muslims. Golan invokes and implores people to forgive because it is, we're instructed to do it religiously. And if we really claim that we love Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he forgave, then we should follow his example. And I believe that Hullah Golan is a very good example of the example of Prophet Muhammad because he himself has forgiven uh, those who have wished him ill. So um, he offers a recipe of how to forgive, uh, the language of forgiveness, uh, tolerance. He said that uh, in conferences we need to talk about it. In the media, we need to talk about it. In music, the lyrics should be, uh, you know, reflect tolerance. And uh, wherever we are, it needs to be pervasive. It needs to be everywhere. I really do think that uh, Fatulai Gulen uh, is a world leader of the magnitude of Mohandas Gandhi, uh, very much rooted in his own tradition, uh, but reaching out to the world with a message that can benefit us all and extending a hand of partnership to the rest of the world uh, offering models of cooperation that aren't the typical ones that we turn to. The American public is only now learning about the Gulen movement, and I think the Gulen movement uh, is um, important for promoting uh, understanding and cross-cultural dialogue, something absolutely crucial in our increasingly uh, interconnected world, and also crucial in an era of terrorism. How could somebody not be touched about the story of those Turkish teachers who are in northern Iraq or uh, Nigeria and really you know the personal sacrifice they make putting their lives in danger and really caring about the students like that idea that even during the war or the threat of bombing the Turkish teachers didn't leave and that they just stayed beside their students and their families so I think that it's something inspirational and I think you have to be pretty cynical um, and, and also, just, I mean, it's pretty clear that these things are really happening. So you have an element of what I would call testimony, 
uh, but not testimony, you know, through the mouth of somebody who's in the movement, but testimony from somebody who went there. Maybe they're going there was facilitated by the movement, because in that case, for example, who could go to northern Iraq on their own? So this woman, her trip was facilitated, but she met real people, you know, Christians, Muslims, Kurds, and they told her what was happening, and she's a witness to that. The movement is so versatile that, that you can find connections all over the place. It's not narrow, it's, it's very, very broad. I have uh, had a chance to, uh, to visit Turkey and uh, to see five cities and see a bit of how dynamic the movement is in Turkey. Um, I find that um, in Canada and in the US, uh, there are many, many things that people can, can learn from, from this movement, and I hope, to, uh, I hope to learn more. The importance of Fethullah Gulen is that uh, he is, yes, uh, he's a, a reformer who brings a, uh, a vision uh, uh, for both Islam and Islamic reform and relations between Islam and the West, but equally important is the fact that there is a social movement that has been inspired by him and that uh, has, has implemented to a remarkable way uh, this vision through a network of schools and universities, hospitals, relief agencies, uh, and, and done it in a way that demonstrates a coming together of the notion of, if you will, Islam and modernity, and also uh, a vision of uh, Islam in a global world and in a pluralistic world and, and an engagement of that global and pluralistic world uh, and does it to a remarkable degree.